Hello and welcome to Territorial Seed Company's Greenhouses. My name is Josh Kirschenbaum and today I'm going to be talking about starting seeds indoors. There are certain types of vegetables like tomatoes or peppers or eggplants that really need to get started inside prior to be planting out in the spring. Now, while most of you probably don't have a greenhouse of this magnitude, I'm here to show you and tell you that it's really, really easy to start seeds indoors. It doesn't take a lot of equipment. It doesn't take a lot of expense. It just takes a little bit of know-how. And today I'm going to show you my secrets on getting things off to a great start. So there's numerous different types of pots or containers you can use to start your seeds indoors. The one that I really like is called a 72 cell flat, and it's called a 72 cell flat because there's 72 cells in here. The reason that I like it so much is because it's a great space saver. Another type of example would be something like a peat pot or a peat pellet, which basically is a thin wafer that when you stick in water will expand and you can plant the seed directly on top of the soil. So when it comes to the type of medium that you want to use, you can certainly use a potting soil, but I really prefer to use a seed starting mix. The reason that I like this mix so much is first of all that it's sterile so that there's no disease in the, in the mix when you're um, planting it. And the other thing is, is that it's really nice and fluffy. You can see here, there's no big chunks of bark or anything that might inhibit a seed from germinating. So I'm just going to show you really quickly, I'm going to fill a few of these cells up with the potting soil. And what I like to do is not necessarily fill the cells all the way up, maybe three quarters of the way high, flatten it out. I'm obviously not going to do this whole thing right now. If it does get filled to the top, you can certainly very easily just poke little holes in here where you're going to place the seed. Now the example that I'm going to use today is Oregon Spring Tomato. It's a great early season tomato. All I'm going to do is pour a few of the seeds into my hand. And what I also like to do is rather than just planting one seed in each cell, I like to plant two or three just because in case there's a germination issue or something else happens, I'll ensure that I do have one plant at least in each cell. So just simply place the seeds in the little holes that I've punched down. I'm just going to put the rest of the seeds back in the packet. And then I like to use vermiculite to cover the seeds up with just because it's nice. It keeps the soil moist. You don't really want to bury a seed too deep unless it's a large seed. Otherwise, just a light coating will work fine. Also, if you don't have any vermiculite, you can certainly just cover it with more seed starting mix. So next we want to get the seed starting mix nice and moist. It's really important to keep it moist until the seeds germinate. So I'm just going to come over here. Turn the water on. And when I'm using a hose like this, I'm going to try not to get it too overly saturated at first so that the seeds don't get moved from one cell to another. If you just have a watering can at home, you want to make sure to do the same thing. So next you need to figure out where you want to keep this. If you live in an area where you get lots and lots of sun in the early spring, usually a south facing window will work just fine. Otherwise, especially here in the Northwest where we get lots of rains in the springtime, even a south facing window isn't really going to provide enough light. So if you don't have a greenhouse, all you need, you don't need really expensive lighting systems. A simple shop light will work just fine. Try to get one that you can hook up on chains so that as the plants continue to grow, you can move the, the light up a little. And the other thing to keep in mind is if you are using just regular shop lights, cool fluorescent lights, you want to make sure that the lights are as close to these as possible without the, touching the plants. Now the reason being is because each of those bulbs is typically only 40 watts and it's not very strong. Another thing to keep in mind is that soil temperature is very important when getting a seed to germinate. So if you're going to be putting your seeds and your seedlings in an area that's not necessarily extremely warm, you might want to use something like a heat mat. These just plug into a regular outlet. You put it underneath your cell tray. And this one fits perfectly underneath one cell. And that'll keep the soil so much warmer, you'll get a much, much faster germination on a lot of your different types of vegetables. So the only th other thing that I want to discuss is where I put the 72 cell flat. I usually take this item, which is called a mesh bottom flat, and as you can see, it obviously lets water go through it. So I keep the 72 cell flat in here, water. If, I, if it's a nice day, I'll water it outside. If it's not a nice day, I'll do it in my bathtub. I'll let some of the water drain out. And then I put this utility flat, 
which does not let water go through, underneath the mesh bottom flap. If you want, you can certainly use a propagation dome. These are great at keeping things nice and moist and warm inside here, but I do wanna warn you that if you use one of these, I highly recommend removing it after the seedlings have germinated and you have nice little sprouts coming up. The reason being is because they need good air circulation and so you want to make sure to get them as much air circulation as possible to prevent diseases like damping off. Now, for more information on what seed varieties that you need to start indoors, as well as the how-tos behind it, I encourage you to visit our website, territorialseed.com, or there's tons of information in our catalog.